process to get that installed. Well, it's not, it's, it's not an easy job in the first place. Add to it that the motor's hot, there's bent metal all over the place. Nothing easy. The 44 on pit road with trouble as well. Tough break for Jared Wisley. Doesn't race all the events in our series, but he's had a couple of tough ones in a row. As we're looking at DJ Kennington, that Castrol Edge Dodge, that's the view you want to see out the rear view mirror is the whole field trying to chase you down as you run out front. Well, DJ just picking them up and setting them down, knowing that his closest competitor, or actually the man he's chasing in the points, is on pit road with trouble. Boy, Jason Hathaway holding on to that position over Don Thompson, so he made the pass, but those two teammates still racing hard out there. Well, Don Thompson Jr. have been watching him. The car is a little bit too loose on corner entry, and you got to be careful not to get spun around. Oh, the 51, he's loose on corner entry as well. Wow, right in front of the battle for second place as we go back on board with Pete Shepard. Just a little tilt to the head to the left as he heads down into the corner. It's a good sign that he's not really leaning on that headrest this early in the event. Oh, the 0-2 carry mix down the bottom, gets the spot. Oh, we got caution on the racetrack. I thought Kerry got a pretty good run there. Obviously, Pete Shepard got the word that we're under yellow a little quicker as, wow, J.R. Fitzpatrick spun around backwards. He'll try to get back in line there. But Fitzpatrick now a lap down to the leaders. He came out of that drive-through penalty almost on the lead lap, racing with the leaders, but that'll definitely cause him some problems. We're on board with DJ. There's the replay. He drives down into the corner. Oh, and he gets contact from the 36, and around he goes. Nice shot by young Noel Dowler to get around that. It looks like Kerry Mix mowing some grass out there, and there's Fitzpatrick. He goes in for some service. Scott Steckley still on pit road. DJ Kennington continues to lead. Don't go away. There's more action from Saskatoon. Restart number two here at Saskatoon. DJ Kennington, the race leader. Pete Shepard in second. It was Noel Dowler getting the VTEC free pass. Billy, he's back on the lead lap. And back up front, DJ Kennington. He chose the outside this time because he saw last time that what a great run the 84 got off of turn two and stole the lead away from him before the penalty. DJ Kennington's going to get that same run off of turn two. There's not many oval tracks in the world where you prefer to start on the outside. But the momentum you can get up high here in Saskatoon is look at Jason Hathaway running the outside of Pete Shepard. Close quarters racing as they exit the turns. Through the middle they separate, but on exit, boy, does it get snug. Side by side down into turn three. Shepard moves him up the racetrack a little bit, trying to get the spot back from the three. And there again, you can see for about two seconds that sun right in his eyes. It might not sound like much to a lot of people, Billy, but you lose your vision for two seconds when you're driving like this, and that can cause big headaches. That's a battle for six right there. What a great run the nine. Mark Dilly for Leland having a great. He must really be hearing all that power come from the grandstand with all those guys visiting here to watch him go. I don't care how long you've been racing or how much of a veteran you are. When there's hundreds of people there cheering you on, you're motivated to do a little bit better. Well, race car drivers have a tremendous ego. And when you got people cheering for you, you try and come to the party. Well, there's no doubt about that. Well, what a party we're having here in Saskatoon. Great racing early on. Oh, trouble for the 21. He's down on pit road. Jason White wins the AEW Dodge to pit road, revving that car up. They're trying to find out where the miss is. They go underneath the hood. The first check, of course, is the plug wires. And if they can diagnose it quickly, he won't go too far down. Boy, that's a terrible break for Jason White, Billy. He'd been running so well, flirting with the top five. That team, that driver, just keep on getting better. Well, Dave and Derek Lynch are doing a great job. The communication weekly gets better between driver and crew chief. And they've got Tyler Case down in the pits as well this weekend, doing some work with Jason White. Here's Nathan Wake. He's a lap down, but having a good battle with James Van Domsler on the lead lap. He needs one of those VTEC free passes to get back on the lead lap. I mean, he's quick enough to run with the leaders. Yeah, he got some damage early on with the spin with Beauchamp on the 22, but he's doing a good job. Another guy doing a good job today is Pierre Bork, standing out of trouble, running ninth. That Aaron's dream machine looking good from the in cars. We're back with DJ Kennington. Started on the pole, and he's led it pretty much all the way here this evening. Well, he's big picture racing for sure, because by now, he's got a clear picture that the 22 is many laps down, and it's a good points night. It's an even better points night if he close out the deal, take home the bonus for leading lap, leading the most laps, and that big trophy for first place. You know, sometimes I catch myself listening to these drivers so smooth. The good drivers are so 
smooth on the throttle, so smooth on the brakes. They make this look easy, but it sure is. Well, when you got the car dialed in, like like Shepard and, and uh, DJ Kennington do, it makes it fairly easy, but you still have to hit your marks and stay out of trouble. Noel Dowler doing a nice job in that MCO number five. He put a move on James Van Domsmar, but then had to move up to get around the lap traffic. These last two races, Billy, he's done great. Well, he's certainly coming a long way. He's got a great coach in his father. His father, no slugs. Oh, big crash. Just as we're talking about him, we have big crash off of turn four. Wow, trouble for Noel Dowler. Looks like he and Shannon Harding got together. Definitely some cosmetic damage, but it looks like all four tires are still up. And he pulls away and will rejoin the field with that Emco bumper hanging off. And we've got action on pit road. Riley Siebert, Dexter Stacy in the 55 in for fuel and a tire pressure adjustment. Nobody's going to take on their tires just yet with the two tire rule, but they'll come in, top up with fuel and make some tire pressure adjustments to get the car running better. There's a lot more racing to come here in Saskatoon. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN. Restart number three comes on lap 93. DJ Kennington's led the entire way, Billy, and he'll start from the outside once again. Well, as we talk about the, 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 the momentum off the top of this racetrack because of the banking, that's where you want to be to get the drive up off the corner. But Shepard this time hanging tough. Man, Kerry Mix looked to the inside. Mark Dilly looked to the outside. There's four drivers battling for the lead on this third mile oval. That's unbelievable. Well, that outside groove really coming in now. You can see DJ not even using that bottom lane. Even while he's out there by himself, he's still giving the bottom away. You know, every driver that's running up there has a tendency to wonder what's going on behind him. But if I'm Pete Shepard, I want to flip that mirror up. I don't want to see those two going to either side of me. Once you're comfortable in these race cars, Adam, you just use the spotter and the mirrors just to take a quick peek to actually see who is tucked up underneath the rear bumper. That's got to be a little bit of a distraction for Jason Hathaway. That hood's cut loose and we've got trouble. That's Isabel Trombling in the 07 going to bring out our fourth yellow of the day. She can't quite get that car pointed in the right direction. Well, cautions, breed cautions as you get these stock cars all stacked up. Somebody just needs to make one little mistake and you have contact and around she goes. Wow, that's the five car right up on two wheels as he went across the nose of the 55. This Castrol Edge Dodge team had lightning fast pit stops at our last race at BC. Fuel going in, they're checking for tire pressure. DJ reported he thought he might have a soft one. Fuel's in, now he's off and away. Well, as the racetrack changes, sometimes even in your mind when you're leading the race, you feel like you get a soft tire. But the crew took care of that. DJ back out the racetrack. Fuel and chassis adjustments all the way down pit road. And how about this for exciting? Our next event, you can watch same day live coverage of the GP3R100 from Trois Rivières on Sunday, August 7th, right after the NASCAR Pocono race here on TSN. Well, just bragging, but we will be the best race on that Sunday. Oh, that's always a fantastic race. You don't want to miss it. But this one's pretty darn good as well. Teammates, Jason Hathaway and Don Thompson Jr. on the front row. And Hathaway with the advantage in that number three. But look at Donnie peg that car on the outside. Don Thompson's been a little loose on corner entry, but look at the drive he gets off of turn two. Great to watch them side by side. There's Pierre Bork in the double zero alongside Kerry Mix in the zero two. That's, uh, that's what you call team orders right there. Enough of this nonsense. Let's not race each other into the ground. You got to love it. Well, and the team order is one in front of the other. We don't care who, but one of you get in front, the other one get behind. None of this side by side. It'd be so easy to cut a tire out there, Billy. Yeah, and also, you gotta, the other thing you got to remember, Hathaway can't really get into too much contact. He's still playing with that fractured hand. And that's got to be painful out here. Wow, Mark Tilly way up in the air. That's Nathan Wink in the Midwest Combustion 48. He got in the back end of Dilly as everybody checked up, and Dilly made a nice save at that number nine. Well, Mark was being real cautious. Van Domsler down there on the bottom. He didn't want to get in the back of him, and, he, and in turn, he gets punted by the 48. Here we're on board, Pierre Bork running in the eighth position, having a nice run, and those hands pretty steady on the steering wheel. 
Well, what we probably don't mention enough is the zero, double zero car is prepared and supplied by DJ Kennington. So not a bad piece to be sitting in. No, you can be pretty sure that's going to be prepared proper when it shows up at the racetrack as we see Mark Dilley racing on the inside of James Van Dops on the 14. Remember, Dilly was on pit road. They made a chassis adjustment to that number nine. There's the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. doing battle with the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick's not had a great day, but he's got a good car underneath him. Carry Mix to the outside of Jason Hathaway. Mixy up to second in that 0-2. He'll try to chase down the leader, Don Thompson, but the top five all right together as we go back to our battle for sixth with J.R. Fitzpatrick on the inside of Ron Beauchamp in that number 60 car. Side by side off a of turn two, it's horsepower all the way down the back stretch. Whoa, the eight gets a little loose. Kerry Mix is gonna take the top spot. I'm not sure the eight got a little loose without some help from Kerry Mix, because boy, did he ever go after him that car. Wow, Don Thompson. Yeah, the eight in the pit. Still there, still there. Wow, the spotters are pretty important. There's a battle for third spot right there between the three and the 17. And Hathaway gets a little squirrely. That's going to cost him another position as Pete Shepard gets to the inside in that number seven car. Hathaway trying to make the outside work, but it just looks like his car might have lost a little bit. Well, Harding getting the move over flag because the leaders are coming. She did a good job of staying out of the competitor's way. Well, she did so a couple of incidents earlier on, but it looks like they've got the handling of better. We're at the Tim Hortons halfway point of this event. Let's go to the halfway update. There's been five leaders this evening for five lead changes. Four cautions already for 37 laps. And the highest placing rookie right now is Dan Shirley in the ninth position. Interesting to say rookie and Dan Shirley in the same sentence. Yeah, he's a veteran for sure, but still a rookie in this division, but he's making a really good showing here today. And he still holds some track records here at Auto Clearing Motor Speedway. They've got them all posted. And what a great job they do here. We've got to thank Trent Seidel, Herm Bordell for the awesome show they put on out here. Well, yeah, what a lot of people probably we don't talk about enough is this is not a privately owned racetrack. This is a club racetrack. And what a facility for a club. There's a lot of professional racetracks would love to have this facility. Well, they just do an amazing job. We talk about it all the time, but we can't talk about it enough. It's fun to be out here as Kerry Mix out in front. But here's a battle. Jason Hathaway trying to hold off. Pete Shepard in that number seven. Well, the three of Hathaway got the nose all crumpled up, and he's being hounded by the seven of Pete Shepard. Here we're going to see a battle for the lead. Don Thompson looks to be closing in on Kerry Mix in that 0-2 to battle for the first position. Kerry Mix having a great run. This is as well as we've seen him run on an oval in quite some time. Well, they said they've been struggling with the car, but thought they had the front end figured out with this soft spring setup. And it looks like he's running really well today. As well, Don Thompson Jr.'s car seems to be better after it gets 20 or 30 laps on it. And now we're starting to get a long green flag run in. That car's starting to come to life. Looks like Shepard about to complete the pass. Hathaway got really loose last time out of turn four. Shepard got up the inside. Hathaway gonna try him again, but maybe he'll tuck back in line and follow young Pete Shepard as we can see a lot of shade inside the car now as the bright sun in the background setting here over Saskatoon. While Pierre Bork having a whale of a day. We haven't seen him chase the three or, eight. you know, he's inside the top 10 and now he's putting the moves on the three of Hathaway. And don't forget, folks, to make your vote count for the 2011 Most Popular Driver Award. Go to NASCARHOMETRACKS.COM, and you can cast your vote on who your favorite is. Billy, who might you vote for? You've raced against some of these. Oh, I got a lot of favorites in this field. They're all great guys. You know, we, we may be competitors over the years, but whether they like to admit it or not, we're all racing friends. Well, you're not kidding. The fraternity making the popular Western swing as Noel Dowler races on the inside of Pierre Bork in that double zero. Dowler minus the cover on that rear bumper, but it's not slowing him down one bit. Wow, he's got some damage on the right front, but he's still running 11. Great battle as we're going to look out the windshield of the Aaron's Dream Machine, driven by Pierre Bork. As Noel Dowler opens up a little distance, here's Riley Siebert. Remember, we talked about the 19-year-old making his NASCAR debut. He's being challenged by Isabel Trombley. But look at the leaders coming. This is a side-by-side -side battle right in front of the race leaders. Oh, we got a pair of lap cars duking it out for position with the leaders right behind him. Don Thompson Jr. opts for the bottom to see if that spot will open. He trusts Noel Dowler a little more. Who's going to get the spot? 
Well, the question to ask is how long before one of these leaders puts the front bumper to one of these lap cars and decides it's time to go? Oh, sorry, I said Noel Dowler. That's young Siebert down in the bottom.